Welcome to PC Woods Kids Tech Talk. Today we're looking at part two of the AMD FX8 core CPU, specifically overclocking. Now, what I did is I went into the BIOS and I also installed the Asus Turbo V Evo on my Scorpius AMD gaming rig. Now, on my previous video, I talked about this. I have a liquid cooling kit here from Asetek. It's uh, a radiator with two fans for a push pull effect, blowing air out of the case. And uh, I've got an HD6870 video card here, all the specs. And of course, in my previous part one video, I ran all the benchmarks at default. Now I'm overclocking it. The Turbo V Evo basically allows you to um, control the voltages, the bus, all of that stuff. And I can show you here, without having to go into the BIOS, how I managed to get 4.6 gigahertz, which is my happy spot, basically, because I didn't want to, you know, go to 5 gigahertz and burn the thing. So 22.5 on the multiplier is a happy medium there. The voltage about 1.37 volts, okay, on the um, on the CPU voltage. I didn't touch the uh, Northbridge voltage, but I could have put it maybe to 1.2, 1.25, just to lock it in, make sure that I had enough juice there. And um, but things seem to be running well on auto as long as I disable all the power management features, you know, disable turbo mode, disable anything there that restricted the um, extreme overclocking that I'm trying to do here, then uh, things were basically stable. And that's where I wanted to be. 4.6 gigahertz gave me nice stable uh, performance. That's about 20 to 30 percent gain depending on what applications you're running, believe it or not. So that's a huge overclocking uh, comparison to uh, previous videos that I've done on AMD chips. Here you got it in CPU-Z and Windows 7. You see all the specs here again that I'm running just so you guys know and and keep this in mind when I do my overclocking I do it in a real case everything installed I don't do it out in the open you know on those test benches that you see most people doing uh, their overclocking with with uh, you know out in the open air that's not real life overclocking right you, you want to overclock it inside of a case just like you would do once you get the uh, case so that way the benchmarks are more meaningful now here is the utility of the liquid cooler from Assetek and um, basically it shows you the RPM of the fan speed. I have it on extreme settings, of course. It is very loud, I gotta admit. Um, and I'm only running it on extreme settings right now because I'm overclocking it and I'm running all eight cores at 100%. If I run it on regular uh, silent mode, then of course I won't be running all eight cores at 100%. I'll just be running it just uh, regular use, you know, regular gaming and stuff like that. So then it's nice and quiet and silent and it works great. So the cooler is good for everyday use. I wouldn't really use the Asetek uh, cooler in this case for a 4.6 GHz because, man, that thing gets loud. Now, 3D Mark Vantage. Let's talk about some benchmarks. Again, 20 to 30% increase in performance. It matched the Intel Core i7-2600K at 3.4 GHz in the scores almost, as you can see right there. But, of course, I had to overclock it. So that's the main thing about this chip. Right, if you overclock this to 4.6 gigahertz, damn right you're gonna get performance, right? But running it at default 3.6 gigahertz, no, right? It won't beat the Intel Core i7 that way. Now here again in Cinebench, you can see also how well it performed. Again, 20 to 30 percent increase in performance just by overclocking it one gigahertz more. Okay. And again, you don't have to overclock like crazy. All you need to do is overclock smart, right? Keep your voltages as low as possible. Come to that nice spot, sweet spot, right? Again, W prime is another example on the calculations that it did. And um, it basically went from 15 seconds to 12 seconds, right, by overclocking. So I got a three-second gain in, uh, in that uh, benchmark. Here are the benchmarks again on AIDA64. And um, on my part one, I showed you CPU Queen and CPU Z Lib. And here, it really showed how the overclocking kicked this into high gear and beat the Intel Core i7-2600, again, on these synthetic benchmarks. Okay, So take these with a grain of salt. But then again, the overclocking was tremendous, and I really, really saw an improvement there. I'd like to thank AMD for providing it, and I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching.